thank the organization for inviting me to participate in this interesting uh, workshop. Um, I think I'm the alien in this morning uh, topic, uh, uh, discussing uh, about Carlerpa, but I hope uh, it will help for the discussion. Uh, at the beginning, the organization asked me to present it, um, the uh, future strategy on, bi on bioinvasions in the European Union, that is the topic that I will talk this afternoon. And afterwards, they, they asked me to split the presentation a little bit and um, make a talk about the example we have uh, uh, developed in Spain with the catalog of invasive alien species. Um, it's not focused on, on marine species because it's a broader um, legislation. And I hope uh, it will help for the discussion and also to, to avoid the mistakes we have uh, done in before in Spain. So um, the, um, the talk will be divided in three, in three, three issues. The first uh, will be the, the national law on natural heritage and biodiversity. This is the, the major legal corpus for uh, nature conservation. It's uh, where the catalog of invasive species was created. So it's the basis for, for the development and how we reach to develop the, the Spanish catalog. Uh, the second, and uh, really briefly, I will explain what we have done uh, with some species uh, from 2007 till 2011, the, when we uh, developed the national catalog. And finally, I will go deeper on the, um, on the article. I don't know if I press, sorry. And I will go deeper um, on, the, um, on the Act uh, 1628 from 2011 and, and what has happened during this more than a year of uh, legislation against the invasive alien species. So as I said, um, uh, the, the law of uh, natural heritage and, and biodiversity from 2007 uh, includes in this introduction uh, how the global trade is increasing the, the introduction of uh, new, new uh, species and some of them can become invasive. So basis on, on, on this, uh, on this uh, problem, uh, this uh, legislation creates the Spanish National Catalog for Invasive Alien Species and it's Article 61. Uh, there are other two articles dealing with the new introductions. Uh, this, uh, the first article is the 52.2 that uh, uh, states that the public administration will uh, ban the introduction of uh, species, subspecies, or breeds uh, when they might lead to compete with the uh, uh, native species or modify genetic purity or ecological balance. This is a good article, but it's really open, and you don't know exactly how to, to manage it, so we'll see later. And more specifically, uh, they ban the, the new introductions for fishing and hunting because it has been one of the, the pathways for, for in, introduce new, new species in the, in the environment. Um, so what has uh, been done from 2007 till uh, 2011 was mostly uh, the Spanish military has worked in, in, in some species. And the biggest two projects were to to, to control Radidac and, and American mink. You can see neither of them are marine, so that's more important on, on terrestrial species. The, 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 um, the support uh, of the ministry. Uh, in that moment, uh, there were no uh, national strategies to control invasive species, so the measures to, to, to fight against these species were inside of the uh, conservation strategy of the uh, white-headed duck and the European mink. Uh, this is, has been supported by the national and regional governments and also uh, with a high uh, financial support of the life projects <coughs> that we, we normally uh, have in Spain. Um, uh, yesterday, I think Alexander uh, pointed why we, we fight against the zebra mussel, and we, he, we have here a, a, a great example. Uh, this is the first strategy to control an invasive species, and why? Because it's a, it's a problem for, for the economy, it's a problem for a lot of infrastructure. So in this sense, uh, the ministry decided to go forward to fight against these in invasive species. And from 2007, they, they have, uh, we have developed uh, many, many, many documents and uh, mapping, uh, also exhibitions, uh, uh, some uh, uh, books for kids, and this this is what this was the first example to, to develop a uh, national strategy against uh, invasive alien species. So, um, uh, but on their behalf, also uh, I should explain that in Spain, the regional communities has the competence of uh, um, management the species, 
and the ministry has the, the competence to develop basic legislation. So on their behalf, some uh, regional communities uh, before the national catalog has developed some specific legislation to fight against some uh, invasive selling species. You can see in Castilla-La Mancha, they, they, they developed some legislation, mainly for uh, inland uh, water species, invasive species in inland water, species and crayfishes. And uh, in La Comunidad Valenciana in 2009, they were the, the first uh, regional community to develop uh, their own black blacklist. Uh, they developed this uh, law decree, uh, 213, and uh, they include two annex. In the first annex, uh, there were the, the most important uh, invasive alien species. Uh, well, um, mostly everything will be banned for the species that are included in this blacklist. Release, planting, trade, traffic, and transport will be forbidden and banned. And they included another uh, annex two uh, uh, that it's, uh, includes only plants and these plants will be banned to, to show or planting or introduce in, in certain uh, protected uh, areas of the regional community. I have included here the, the uh, species included in the annex one for you to see and as an example, and uh, they included uh, the Caulerpas, uh, Bathemos and Taxifolia are the only marine species, but at least uh, there is uh, something. The rest are mainly uh, terrestrial, and I said, in the annex two, there are only, only plants, and they include 12, 34 plants. So other initiatives uh, of the regional communities have been the Andalusian program of invasive uh, uh, control for different species. And uh, I want to point it here just as an example what uh, Balearic Island did then during 2010. They developed some projects to fight against plants like Penicetum, also Coati, uh, Naswa Naswa, I don't know if Coati is the, the common name in English, uh, appear in, in the Balearic Islands, so they have developed some uh, controls for mammals. And uh, it was a big uh, project, the rodent eradication in, in Sadragonera, uh, an inhabited island. Um, it seems it's going quite well, so yeah, just an example. You can imagine there are many, many uh, projects uh, uh, developed by the regional communities on uh, invasive species uh, control, but uh, I just want to point some some examples. So for for marine species, uh, this I uh, said is, is not focused on marine species, but uh, the main issues are as you saw in in, Balear, in Valencia legislation uh, the Caulerpas, and I have uh, included here some links uh, to uh, documents uh, developed by the regional communities by the civil servant of the of the different uh, departments where they have found another example of uh, invasive alien species. Maybe you would like to, to check on, on these documents uh, what about these species. So uh, now uh, going on, on in, in the deep uh, of the, um, how we reach to develop the national uh, catalog of invasive alien species. Uh, I think this is boring, this is properly legislation, but I, need, I think it's need to, to understand how, how we develop uh, the catalog. Uh, as I said, um, the Spanish uh, law on natural heritage and biodiversity included the uh, creation of this catalog. And uh, in its article 61, uh, uh, they include uh, six points. The, the first one uh, said which species will have to go in this uh, catalog. And, and they explain like it should be a serious threat. Uh, I will explain later the problems we have had, but one of the problems is that to define clearly what is a serious threat. So, but uh, at least it, they include a serious threat for indigenous species, habitats, and, but also for economical resources. So they include cons proper, co proper conservation and also economic issues. So we will have to find a, a balance on, on, on these uh, two things. Uh, and the second point they establish how and whom can uh, propose the introduction of a new species in the catalog. It could be like uh, administration, public administration, but it's a, a new new issue on, on this kind of uh, working that any person can, can request to, to include a, 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 a new species. For the blacklisted species, what will be the effects? The effect will be almost everything. It will be ban of possession, transport, traffic, trade, uh, any matter is alive or dead. Uh, this could be also a problem for management, and uh, including foreign trade. 
Uh, some other issues uh, uh, included in the Article 1, and I think this is one of the most important points, is the, the obligatory measure for the regional communities that are the, the, the competence on management of the species to monitor the, the potential invasive alien species. What are these potential invasive? Maybe uh, um, uh, species that have become invasive in other countries with the similar uh, climate conditions, so they will have to make a research to see which one, uh, or to know with the pathways, uh, where are they coming. Um, other, the, the fifth point is the, the obligatory to, to develop a strategies for the species included in the blacklist. This is more uh, to deal with uh, control, contention, or eradication not uh, prevention. And finally, uh, it's allowed to the regional community to develop their own catalogs if they, if they think they need. So well, as I said before, any person can request to include a, a, a species in the catalog. Uh, every time that they, they, they provide the technical and scientific information to support this inclusion. I put it here, the, the articles of the legislation. I, I won't go article by article, because it could be really boring. But I, I will just want to show you how, how is it. The first part, from uh, one to, to, to seven, is uh, administration works, how it works, how you can include the species, what will be a registry, public registry, where the people can go and check. Uh, the articles from eight to nine, from A to, to 11 is more like effects and prevention and control measures. Uh, 12 is the control uh, strategies and, uh, and 13, 14 and 15 are funding and, and, and sanctions. There are also uh, temporary and uh, transitional re uh, requirements that every legislation has, but I, I didn't include it here. I will explain later a little bit. So, um, after more than two years of discussions, uh, and meetings with different stakeholders, with the industry, pet and nursery industry, with the NGOs, with the regional communities, we have a specific committees for coordination between the ministry and regional communities, and we have many meetings during these uh, more than two years. The final decision was to, to, to divide the legislation into annex also. The annex one will be properly the, the catalog that it was created in the, in the law of uh, um, 2007. So the annex one will include the, the species, the, the, the most dangerous species, and it will be an effect of uh, banning the possession, transport, traffic, and trade, uh, and including foreign trade. The, um, the legislation uh, also recognizes the need for exemptions. Uh, so in case of research, health, or security reason, we can have an exception on these uh, uh, prohibitions. And the Annex 2 will include um, the potential invasive alien species. It, it will be based on the Article 61.4 that obliges the regional communities to, to monitor this potential invasive. And also, and taking in, uh, into account the Article 52.2 that I said before, it was a little bit open and you didn't know what exactly to do with him. Based on this article, uh, it will be banned to introduce in the nature like a like um, um, prevention principle, uh, before knowing a study what is going on, it, it is banned to, to include these uh, species in the, in the nature. So this is a summary of the, of the number of species included in the, in the annexes. Uh, for the annex one are 136 and annex two, 265. It seems uh, quite a lot, but uh, if we compare with the, uh, with the leads and catalog of uh, threatened species, there are almost 1,000 in, in the Spanish national uh, threatened species, so it's not so, so much. Um, as an example, uh, I include here for you that are specialists on marine species, the, the marine species included in the catalog. I will uh, talk later about the problems, so uh, you can imagine some of them have been uh, discussed afterwards. Um, I can explain only like um, the, the lionfish, why it's here, it's not because we have it, but uh, during the meetings with the pet industry, they, they, um, they provide information that the, the, the people was starting to use this uh, fish uh, a lot, like a, like a pet in aquariums. So they proposed to include in the catalog before something happened 
to prevent possible escapes or release from the, from the private aquarium. So I think this is uh, one uh, species included in, in the prevention issue. Some other are uh, already uh, present uh, in Spain. And for example, for Castinus maenas, uh, it is included only for the Canary Islands. And they, they have problems with uh, some native species in the peninsula are becoming invasive in the Canary Islands. So the catalogs also include this, de this um, difference for the, for the regions, mainly for Balearic and, and Canary Islands, not for the rest of the peninsula. We have some specific considerations for the, for the islands. So um, I didn't want to go article by article. I just put here some of the uh, prevention measures included in the legislation. I think one uh, good thing was the creation of a scientific committee to give support the ministry and regional community on the decision of including or excluding a species from the, from the catalog on the list. Uh, it's not because we don't have this support from the uh, uh, scientific part, but it was good to have it on the legislation for the politicians to know that afterward, when we take some decisions, we will ask them uh, for opinion, and it's easier to, to, to have uh, this, this uh, on, the, on the back, this help on the back, and we, we decided to include an article for establish this uh, scientific committee. Also, uh, it's include an article where uh, established the, the basic um, line for, for making risk analysis before uh, uh, release any species in the environment. So it's established um, what things what should, uh, should be included in the, in the risk analysis. It, it's the first time that uh, an art, an, a legislation includes something like that. For the border controls, uh, I also include the possible uh, immobilization of goods that are um, uh, infected uh, unintentionally, probably by some of the some of the invasive species in the blacklist. Uh, uh, another thing was the yeah then it was asking by the um, we have uh, also like um, in the inside of the ministry for the water basins they have their own um, um, departments who are in charge of this and they ask uh, for the obligation to include evaluation for before transferring water from one to other uh, basins I, I you know I don't know if you you know but this is important in Spain because we have really problems with in the south with the water, so they normally transfer water from some rivers to the other ones. Uh, also, they need to de develop preventive measures for, for industry that can uh, manage uh, potential invasive. Uh, will be, uh, now uh, we will have uh, something that to go to the industry and say you, you must have uh, uh, prevent conditions to, to, to to prevent the, the release and the escape of uh, the species you are uh, working with. And latest, the, also it was a problem for, for the plants remain after cutting or wherever, uh, it will be a preventive measure to, to control and you won't be allowed to, to leave them every, everywhere. You will have to, to ask for permission and, and all these things. Uh, other important point for, for prevention is the development of an uh, early warning network. The coordination will be in the ministry and the focal points will be the regional communities. As I say, the regional communities have the competence of management of the species, so they will have the obligation to develop their own network inside the, the regional community and to inform to the coordination uh, which species appear uh, like new potential invasive species in their territories, and what uh, rapid measures that have taken to, to control them. Um, for control and eradication, as I said before, uh, the most important thing will be the development of uh, strategies for all the species included in the blacklist. Uh, here is a, uh, in, including, uh, there is a, an article for public awareness. This is more prevention than uh, control, so it should be in the former slides. And other uh, horizontal measures uh, or topics we have included in the legislation uh, are uh, hybrids. The hybrids with uh, species included in the catalog will be considered invasives as well. This is a problem for uh, Coturnis, uh, Coturnis, for example, that is mostly hybridated with uh, Coturnis japonica and is used for hunting. So we will also include as invasive uh, all the hybrids uh, with uh, invasive felony species. We, we wanted to develop a synergy with uh, liability legislation to, to oblige the, the industry to have um, 
insurance or develop this kind of uh, funds for if something happened and they have to, to respond to, to the release. Um, the, uh, the legislation includes uh, special uh, measures for fishing and hunting of species that were established in Spain before uh, this legislation. As you can imagine, there is a lot of um, sports based on these species, so it's not so easy to, 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 to ban everything. Uh, for pets also, uh, after the, the, the catalog, uh, the owners will be allowed to, to maintain the, their pets, but they will have a year to inform the, the administration uh, about the, their possession, and the administration will have to develop a, a registry of these pets and maybe uh, put some measures uh, to control them, and track them, or I don't know, whatever they, they think is, is needed to, to to avoid uh, escapes or releases. There are other transitory requirements to, to pass from their actual situation to the new one, and, and every legislation must include. And uh, as I said before, uh, some uh, specificity for islands. Uh, the legislation recognized the, um, the importance of uh, conservation uh, projects in the uninhabited islands, as for example, the one made by Balearics with uh, rodent eradication. So this is also included in the legislation. And uh, for a specific species, we have uh, included a moratorium because uh, the industry has no time to, to, to change everything. So, for example, uh, uh, Trachemis scripta is really, 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 really well known as a pet in Spain. Every house almost has uh, uh, Trachemis scripta. So they will have one year and, and a half to, to, to um, adapt to the new legislation. And for plants also, they will have two years. To, to adapt to the new legislation. So uh, now, uh, main issues under the discussion after this year and some few months of uh, legislation. Uh, despite the many uh, committees of coordination between the regional communities and the ministry, after the publication of the legislation, three regional communities asked the ministry to, to um, to take out the, 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 the annex two. They think uh, this annex was not specifically created in the legislation. It was only the article 61.4 that established the obligation for, for regional communities to, to develop uh, monitoring strategies. But uh, they, they think there, there was not a need to, to uh, include here which species that they should follow, and they, they, they think they have the competence to develop uh, an ex of potential invasive species, and it should not be the ministry to decide on this, because you can imagine there are some species uh, problematic. Uh, for example, the rainbow trout was included in this annex too. It's true that the rainbow trout is not um, reproducing in, in our rivers, but every year uh, all the regional communities uh, release uh, and reintroduce uh, thousands of uh, uh, rainbow trout for fishing, so yeah, it was this kind of problem who, who, who made the regional communities to, to ask for the um, take out of the Annex II. Um, some other problems uh, is the difficulty of uh, defining what is exactly a serious threat. Uh, it depends on who have different opinions. So yeah, sometimes it's, it was difficult to, to explain we, why we include one species in the Annex I on um, base of the serious threat. And maybe we will have to set some uh, more uh, clear criteria to, 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 it, to this issue. Uh, also, but more practical issues have been what to do with the pets that the people doesn't have, uh, doesn't want. Um, how to establish this registry. It will be a lot of information. Uh, can the administration afford this in the, in the economical situation we have now? There are more practical issues of developing all this uh, legislation. Um, also, uh, how to control unintentional introductions. Um, here, as an example, I, I have to say that uh, uh, this legislation includes an article that says uh, for the marine species, uh, um, uh, identify on ballast water, uh, the measures to be taken will be the one established in the ballast water convention. 
the problem is that uh, I will and I will uh, explain a little bit more this afternoon. The water uh, ballast uh, conversion is uh, convention is not yet in force. So, what will happen till this convention enter into force? Uh, what will be the measures that we have to to take to control these unintentional land reductions? Uh, we have also to, to define uh, more strictly the, the competence in border controls and probably we will do this uh, modification and I think we are working a lot with um, border controls to develop uh, more s uh, strict uh, controls and to define m more clear for them what they have to do and what they have to look for. And uh, finally, as I said before, one of the main um, difficulties we have had is the fishing and, and hunting issue. There's a big lobby in Spain, and to try to control anything uh, on this issue is really, really hard. Uh, talking about uh, specific species, uh, the more uh, conflict by the moment have been American mink, um, because in Spain we have farms for food of uh, American mink. So yeah, it's difficult to control, um, and if we have these kind of farms, uh, probably having escapes or release of American mink, and it's difficult to, to set um, uh, more um, difficult uh, measures to control this uh, industry. American crayfish, because uh, there's a, a market to, to eat. In Spain, we, we eat this uh, crayfish, so there's also an industry set on, on this species, so it's also to difficult to control. Wakame, uh, we, is, as you know, it's uh, broadly used for cooking and a lot of things. So um, uh, for one side, it was really good for a legislation from 2007 to develop uh, and create a, a catalog for invasive and species. I think it was a good thing, uh, really early time. Nobody has done something like that, but by the other side, this strict uh, article that ban everything, almost everything, make difficult to manage to manage some some species. So maybe for the wakame, it will be good to 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 ban uh, plantation because we know it has been done in in Spain plantation, and now they say they don't do any longer, but we have already there. So sometimes uh, maybe a strict situation is good for new introductions but for the ones you have already in the country you cannot be so strict and you have to develop more uh, management strategy and not ban it, banning things and as i said before the rainbow trout and the fishing uh, species like black bass or or silurus and, and just to to finalize uh, i have put here some maybe some species for the discussion afterwards. Like, uh, are these considerations enough for marine species? We will need to, to develop a specific issue for marine or not. Uh, we have included here like a broader uh, legislation, everything included. Um, this is good, not uh, what we have to, to modify. In, uh, enough for an intentional introduction. And as I said also, uh, what about the ballast water convention measures? Uh, will be enough or not? So, uh, Muito obrigada. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, muchas gracias.